Well, we'd like to welcome you to Lesson 7 of the Temple Theme throughout the Scripture. And what a joy it has been so far to uh, teach through this Temple Theme and that God desires to dwell among His people. And aren't you thankful that God is a God that dwells among His people and that we understand that any earthly uh, temple is uh, patterned after the heavenly temple uh, that is with God. And so we're thankful that when uh, man could not come and go to where God was, that God came to where man was. And we're looking at this temple theme through the scripture, and we are moving along. We have uh, been at the um, Garden of Eden. We have looked at the... Uh, tabernacle in the wilderness. We have looked a couple weeks at the tabernacle of David. And boy, how we see uh, the worship that surrounded uh, this uh, tent, uh, this uh, tabernacle of David. And boy, aren't you thankful that uh, the Lord Jesus, all Jews and Gentiles are saved alike and by grace through faith. And we're thankful of uh, um for the Lord Jesus and the finished work of Calvary. So we've been looking at, at uh, this temple theme. Well, tonight's study, I ask you to turn to the book of 1 Kings. The book of 1 Kings, chapter number 6. 1 Kings, chapter number 6, and we'll begin reading a few verses there. I want you to keep your Bibles open, and uh, we are going to, in lesson 7... We're going to look at the temple of Solomon, Solomon's temple. Now, we do understand that uh, the phrase, uh, the temple of Solomon, or Solomon's temple, is not mentioned in the Bible. Uh, no more than uh, Moses, uh, the tabernacle of Moses. But we understand uh, that it is the tabernacle that Moses built. It is the temple that Solomon built. We understand that it's the temple of the Lord. But we do identify it in its time period, and we identify it in its construction and in its beginning by the temple of Solomon, Solomon's temple. And so we never lose uh, sight that it is uh, the Lord's temple, but we do understand that the Lord used man to build uh, his habitation. And so it's very interesting that we look at that. I'm interested in 1 Kings chapter number 6, and verse 11, as we begin reading. And the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this house which thou art in building, if thou wilt walk in my statutes, and execute my judgments, and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then will I perform my word with thee, which I spake unto David thy father, and I will dwell among the children of Israel, and will not forsake my people Israel. In verse 14, so Solomon built the house and finished it. 1 Kings chapter 7 and verse 51 says, So was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated, even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. And so uh, I want tonight to uh, begin this temple of Solomon, Solomon's temple. And I want to uh, look at the historical, historical part of this. We want to look at the information given on uh, uh, this um, building and this structure that Solomon was allowed uh, to build. We see the historical emphasis there is a spiritual emphasis to this as well, but the structural or the historical emphasis is needed as well. So tonight, our study will be a lot of reading of the Word of God. So keep your Bibles open, and uh, as we have done with the tabernacle of Moses and of David, we have searched the Scriptures to see uh, where these uh, ended up and how they came about. We will do that with the temple of Solomon as well. And so when we think about this uh, temple theme and the temple of Solomon, I 
was thinking of the four great structures uh, up till now. Uh, you know, uh, the great structure of the ark of Noah. Uh, what a what a structure for God's uh, presence uh, uh, to dwell, and no doubt uh, the spirit of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, dwelt there in that ark of Noah. And then the tabernacle of Moses. We know that that is uh, where God said in the holy of holies, uh, "I will meet you there." And so we see the presence, the spirit of God there. And then the tabernacle of David. Uh, this uh, structure, this tent that David erected for the ark of the covenant. And so then we think about the Temple of Solomon. What a beautiful, magnificent building structure that this was. And so when we look at this, we have to understand uh, that there's been much written about the Ark of Noah. Uh, there's been so much, very few verses about the Ark of Noah and uh, Noah's Ark. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, information uh, put out about that, books written and, and uh, movies made, and theater has uh, brought in uh, the production of Noah's Ark. But I find that uh, there's very few verses concerning that. But yet when you come to the tabernacle in the wilderness, there are many, many chapters and many verses. Of course, we know there are volume after volume written upon the subject of uh, the Ark of Noah and the Tabernacle of Moses. But yet when you get to the Tabernacle of David, very little. There's very few verses about it, and uh, there's very little written about it. As in my studies and in my research, I only found one book that a uh, human author had written concerning the Tabernacle of David. But yet, this is the same with the Temple of Solomon. You would think that such a great uh, event and such a great uh, structure that there would be a whole lot written about uh, the Temple of Solomon, but we find that there's not. There's not a whole lot of uh, writing about the Temple of Solomon. Uh, it's in several chapters uh, in Kings and Chronicles, and we understand uh, that it's mentioned uh, in other places. But it has been an area of neglect for many Bible students. Now, I'm not necessarily sure why that is. I don't know why that the Temple of Solomon has uh, been neglected uh, and uh, not written about, such as the Tabernacle of Moses has volume after volume. But yet uh, there are um, less chapters about the temple than there is the tabernacle. Maybe that is one of the reasons. I'm not real sure. But I will tell you this, that it's of great significance that we understand uh, the historical emphasis, uh, uh, the structural emphasis uh, of uh, this uh, uh, temple of the Lord. And uh, as we do that, uh, sometimes people will say, well, why in the world are we uh, uh, looking at um, uh, this uh, structure? Why, why are we studying uh, this uh, temple of the Lord? Why would we go back into this historical arena and uh, try to glean some uh, great truths from that? Let me just remind you that uh, uh, the study of the temple may be one of the most neglected portions of Scripture, uh, yet it is part of the Scripture. Amen? And all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. We understand 2 Timothy 3 and 16 reminds us of that. And we understand uh, that whatever was written, the Bible teaches uh, uh, in uh, the book of Romans, chapter 15, and four, that everything that was written aforetime, uh, it was written for our learning. And so don't give up on a study like the Temple of Solomon and don't think, well, we're just going through measurements and we're going through uh, uh, different uh, uh, aspects of these this uh, sacramental uh, um, uh, order that God had given them. Don't, don't give up on that because it is written aforetime for our learning. There's a great uh, spiritual truth and there's great significance. We do see in the tabernacle in the wilderness, the tabernacle of David, the same thing in the temple of Solomon, that it is shadows and types of the true temple, uh, the true uh, Savior that would come, the Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect, the eternal Savior. And so when we think about this, it's not something that we should not study because it is for our learning. We understand that all that happened, uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 and uh, verse 6 and even in verse 11 that all that happened in Israel was given for our ensamples. And uh, so we are to uh, understand that it's written for our 
uh, admonishing and our encouragement and our learning. And so then we think that uh, as uh, we look at this uh, uh, Old Testament historical time of uh, the Temple of Solomon, uh, there's no doubt that the law, the very word of God, the Old Testament writings, was a schoolmaster uh, to uh, bring us to Christ. And a study of the temple uh, brings us to Christ, who is God's perfect temple, and uh, in whom all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in bodily form. And so we are thankful that we can look back and see that uh, Jesus came to fulfill all uh, that shattered and was shattered forth and prophesied of in the law and in the prophets. And this temple is a whole sacrificial system uh, shattered forth and uh, prophesied uh, uh, of the sufferings of Christ, but also the glory that should follow. And so when we study this, uh, we understand uh, that uh, we can see a lot of uh, uh, about the Lord Jesus and so much teaching about the true temple, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's so much in the temple of Solomon that will teach us about uh, uh, the Christian who is uh, uh, created to be a temple or dwelling place uh, of God. And sin ruined uh, uh, the temple, no doubt about it. But God uh, is a restoring God, amen, through the redemption uh, uh, of uh, his children to be that temple indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, we believe believers both uh, individually and corporately uh, constitute the temple uh, of God today. And so when we think about this, we are intrigued uh, to study this structure, uh, this temple of Solomon, because we understand uh, its great significance uh, to teaching us more about Christ, uh, which will then tell us more about ourselves and who we are in Christ. And so when we think about this, I want to, in this lesson, as we look back uh, at the historical emphasis and the structural emphasis, I want us to realize uh, uh, the desire, the desire to build the temple of the Lord, uh, the desire to build uh, this temple for the Lord. We understand that the tabernacle of Moses and of David uh, was temporary. We understand that it was uh, as a tent. It was uh, as a uh, cloth uh, uh, building. And we understand that it was movable. Now, we do know that in David's tabernacle, as we studied, uh, that it was brought into the city of David. It was brought in uh, uh, to represent a more permanent dwelling. We do understand that the tabernacle of Moses was still standing uh, as uh, at the same time of the tabernacle of David. Uh, uh, the tabernacle of Moses consisted of everything but the Ark of the Covenant because David had the Ark of the Covenant. There's a great lesson in that to which we will look at at a later time. But I do want to remind you, and Solomon visited both of them uh, before constructing the temple. But I do want to remind you that in this uh, idea of a tent and in this idea of a curtain uh, dwelling of God, it was temporal. It had the idea of being temporal. And now this desire to build a permanent house for the Lord. Where did this desire come from? Who, who had this desire? It's very interesting that in the tabernacle of Moses that God called Moses up into the, uh, the mountain and God showed him uh, and gave him uh, the pattern for this tabernacle. He gave him the law and which he could not keep. He gave him uh, the tabernacle and the pattern so that when the law was broken, they could come, uh, offer a sacrifice uh, and uh, experience uh, the redemption through uh, that blood. And so when we think about this, uh, this is something uh, that we understand uh, when we get to uh, this desire of the tabernacle. It was God uh, that uh, spoke to Moses. But we find in the desire for the temple of the Lord uh, that David uh, possessed this desire uh, in the early beginnings. David was the first uh, to uh, acknowledge this ex desire. Now, you don't have to turn here. Stay in 1 Kings. We'll be there for just a little while. But I want to read you a few verses out of... Uh, 
2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 1. And we're going to read a few verses. Now, uh, it came to pass when the king sat in his house, talking about David, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar. But the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And so David's concerned about uh, the Lord's house. He's got this great house uh, uh, of uh, cedars, and he's got this great house uh, of, uh, of gold and colors and all of that. And he says, but the, but the house uh, of the ark of, the, of God dwelleth uh, uh, not in a house like mine, but uh, within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. Now we understand that after that, uh, uh, that uh, the word of the Lord came unto Nathan the prophet. And uh, the Lord began to talk to Nathan about uh, this, uh, uh, this desire of David to build a temple. And God uh, let Nathan know that David would not be the man uh, that would uh, uh, build this temple. And uh, so Nathan is getting this vision for the Lord. And uh, Nathan uh, is getting this word from God. And the Bible said in verse 12, And when thy days be fulfill, fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy, with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish uh, his kingdom. Now this is not just speaking of Solomon, but beyond, all the way to the Lord Jesus Christ. This Davidic uh, covenant that God made with David. And uh, it's first revealed here to Nathan uh, to give to David and to let David know. And he said, uh, he shall build an house for my name. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, uh, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established uh, forever. According uh, to all these words, uh, and according to all this vision, uh, so did Nathan speak. Speak unto David. And so uh, we understand uh, that the desire uh, of uh, David was to build uh, a house for God and to build this house permanently. We need to understand this desire that uh, of this temple was first in the heart of David. But yet God spoke to Nathan after Nathan uh, said to him, Go do all this in thine heart. God said, No, no, no. He's not going to build uh, my temple. And so uh, then we understand uh, that uh, it would be David's seed that would build uh, this temple. And ultimately, uh, uh, the perfect and pure temple of God would come from that line, that tribe of Judah, and it would be the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when we think about the desire, that's what... David said. What did Solomon say? Well, you're already in 1 Kings. Look in chapter 5. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 5. And uh, you'll notice uh, that uh, in verse number 2, and Solomon sent to Haram uh, saying, Thou knowest how that, my, that David my father could not build an house unto the name of the Lord his God for the wars which were about him on every side until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God hath given me rest on every side so that there is neither adversary nor evil occurrent. And behold, I purpose to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spake unto David my father, saying, Thy son, whom I will set upon thy throne in thy room, he shall build a house unto my name. You don't have to turn, but in First Chronicles, or Second Chronicles chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible said, Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared unto David his father in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. 
And so we understand that David uh, had a great desire to build uh, the, ta- uh, the temple of the Lord. Now be very mindful uh, when we do our study questions and our test questions uh, that this desire of the temple of the Lord will be on that because it's very important that we understand uh, that David uh, in his uh, worship of the tabernacle of David uh, and having possession of the Ark of the, the Covenant uh, He desired uh, that God have a house uh, greater than the house that he lived in. That the presence of David in his house uh, was one thing. But the presence of the Lord, which was represented in the Ark of the Covenant, uh, it was greater to David. David's uh, ending life desire was to have a house that God could dwell in. A temple that God could be in that would be greater than any house uh, that man lived in. What a great lesson that is to all of us, uh, that we have a clean place and a beautiful place and a permanent place of dwelling for God's spirit and for God's presence and his power. It ought to be the desire of every child of God where God dwells within us. And we'll look at the temple of the uh, Christian later. But I just say to us right now that David had a desire for the temple of God uh, and he wanted it to be greater and, and more beautiful than anything that existed. And this desire is what began this. Uh, and although David could not not build this temple. Uh, uh, David was allowed to begin to gather uh, the materials and be- and to gather and get ready for this temple so that when it came time for Solomon to uh, build the temple, everything was ready and in order. And boy, what a great lesson that is uh, uh, to us. And so when we think about this, uh, then Solomon had a desire for the temple. It was not that Solomon tried to change the desire that David had, but Solomon followed right in that. And he had a desire to build uh, the temple. What David had in his heart, uh, so did Solomon. What David could not experience with his hands, uh, Solomon experienced with his hands. And so when we think about this, it is the temple of Solomon. It is the temple that Solomon built. And in this desire of the building of the temple of the Lord, I'm uh, interested in this man, Solomon. And it's something that we need to notice. Solomon is an interesting character in the Bible. And so the person of Solomon, just who was this man? Well, we understand and we realize that he is the son of David. 1 Kings 2 and 1, Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, 2 Samuel 7 and 12, When thy days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. And so we understand that Solomon was a son of David. But Solomon was a servant. Uh, Not only was he the son of David, uh, but he was a servant uh, full of wisdom. Now, turn, if you will, to 1 Kings uh, chapter number 5, or 1 Kings chapter number 3. 1 Kings chapter number 3, we find uh, that Solomon, uh, uh, in verse 3, loved the Lord, uh, walking in the statue of David his father, only sacrificed and burned incense in high Places And so Solomon uh, is seeking the Lord. He had a father that sought the Lord. We understand that. And so when we look at uh, David uh, and uh, his children, we understand that he had a son, Absalom, that uh, sought to do uh, opposite of uh, what David did uh, following the Lord. He sought uh, the fleshly side of his father. He sought the sins of his father. He sought the failures of his father and repeated uh, the the very sins that his father David uh, had committed. But we see that Solomon sought the spiritual side of David. He sought the God side, not the flesh side, not the man side. And Solomon uh, walked in the statutes of David, uh, his father. 
Could we take a moment and give the lesson to all of us that we may have mentors, we may have fathers and grandfathers, we may have uh, uh, people that uh, we look up to, and may we understand that we are looking to a man, we are looking to a woman, and they have failures and faults. But may we be like Solomon and desire the wisdom of David, not the wickedness of David. May we look uh, at Solomon uh, and desire the sanctification and salvation of David, not the sinfulness of David. It is interesting to note that in David's life, uh, uh, his son Absalom sought uh, his failures, but yet Solomon sought his forgiveness. And so when we look at this, uh, when you get to 1 Kings 3 and verse 5, uh, the Bible said, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared uh, to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, now watch this, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked after thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept him uh, uh, this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, and it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. What great humility that this now king possesses. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thou so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord. That type of speech will always please the Lord. Why did Solomon get to build this great house of the Lord? Well, notice the speech that he uh, gave to the Lord, pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked uh, this thing. God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked for riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there is none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast asked or not asked, up both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in the ways and keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And so approaching God with the, the humility of Solomon and the honesty of uh, Solomon and the hunger of of Solomon. It makes up uh, for a great man. Amen. Uh, uh, when we seek the wisdom. And it is said of Solomon that there was no king like him. And that kings would come uh, and thousands would come and listen to him as uh, he uh, quoted uh, those thousands of proverbs. And as he sang those thousands of songs. There was no one like Solomon. There was no one like him in the land. He was raised up. But isn't it amazing that he was raised up by God because he was put down by himself. He lowered himself. He humbled himself before the Lord. And the Lord raised him up. The Bible teaches that, does it not? That we are to come humbly before the Lord. And that if we want to be wise, we must see ourselves uh, as ignorant and unlearned. And God will take the base things and the unlearned things uh, and the things that look as if they have no value. And He will raise them up to great value. But it's the attitude of the heart of Solomon that stands out. This historical structure, uh, 
how did it come to be? It was in the heart of David. It was in the heart of Solomon. And it was something that they wanted to do for the Lord. And it was all about uh, bringing honor and glory to the Lord. It was not about themselves. Uh, they wanted themselves uh, uh, not to be seen, but that God would be seen. Would we ever learn from this uh, desire for the temple of the Lord? Could we learn in our day and time uh, that the work uh, for the Lord uh, is first begun in the heart uh, of the child of God uh, as we come to God and say we want to do a work for you, but we don't want to get any of the credit. We don't want to get any of the glory. We want you to be honored and glorified. What a great lesson in the temple of Solomon. How it came to be, how it came to pass, that Solomon had a humble heart. David was humbled in his heart. Lord, uh, not my house. Uh, I want to build you a house. Uh, Solomon said, not my house. I want to build you a house. And God uh, honored that. And so he was the son of David. He was uh, the servant uh, with wisdom. But then he is the sovereign of God's people. He is the king. 1 Kings chapter 2. You're close to that. You can flip back uh, to 1 Kings chapter 2 and pick up reading with me in verse 10. So David slept with his fathers and was bare in the city of David. And the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. Seven years uh, reigned he in Hebron and 30 and 3 years reigned uh, he in Jerusalem. In verse 12. 1 Kings chapter 2. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. 1 Kings 4 1 said, So King Solomon was king over all of Israel. And so there is uh, the desire uh, for this temple of the Lord. It came uh, from one king to another king, it was passed from King David. Uh, to King Solomon, his son. And I say to us that as we look at this, uh, uh, this historical emphasis on the building uh, of the temple of the Lord, uh, we find that it was uh, deep in the heart uh, of God's men. And may we remember that any work of the Lord, there is an application that can be seen from David's heart and Solomon's heart uh, that any work of the Lord uh, that will have any uh, uh, glory and any praise to God uh, must be within the heart of the servant to say, Lord, I, I want to do something uh, for you. I want to do something uh, uh, where your presence uh, uh, can be sensed. And so we see the desire of the building uh, of the temple of the Lord. Let me hurriedly uh, give you the second thought uh, this evening. There is the delight, the delight of the building of the temple of the Lord. Now, I ask you, uh, uh, if you will, to turn uh, to 2 Chronicles chapter 6. Second, and I'll ask you to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter number 6 and uh, verse number 3. Uh, when we come to 2 Chronicles chapter number 6 and verse number 3 concerning the delight of the building of the temple of the Lord. I'm interested in that. The Bible said, And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen uh, Jerusalem, that my name might be there. And I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Now, but the Lord said to David, my father, for as much as it was in thine heart to build an house for my name, thou didst well in that, that it was in thine heart. He said, uh, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. It is very important 
Child of God, what is in our heart. Amen. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son which shall come forth out of thy loins. He shall build the house for my name. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he had spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David my father and am set on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And in it have I put the ark wherein uh, is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel. Turn back to 1 Kings chapter 9. I told you we're going to look at the, the Bible tonight. We're going to study our Bible. We need to know uh, how this temple came about before we look at its dimensions, before we look at uh, uh, the duties uh, and all of that. We need to see the desire and the delight of this building of the temple of the Lord. 1 Kings chapter 9, look in verse 1. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all Solomon's desire which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he appeared unto him in Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I've commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgment. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. And I promise to David thy father saying, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye are your children and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them and this house, which I have hallowed for my name. Will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house which is high, everyone that passeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, because they forsook the Lord their God who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have taken hold upon other gods and have worshipped them and served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. And it came to pass at the end of twenty years when Solomon had built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. We see the desire. It was in the heart of David to build God a permanent dwelling place on earth. And it was passed to the heart of Solomon. And we find that Solomon was there as he finished this. After the 20 years was up, he had finished uh, this uh, beautiful, magnificent house uh, for the Lord. And so what do we learn? We learn there's great delight in having the right desire for the Lord. Would you amen that tonight? Could you say that we can see in this uh, uh, building of the temple of the Lord, uh, there was a great desire to do something for God. And uh, in uh, the completion of that, when this house was completed, there was great delight and worship and praise. As we can look through the scriptures in Kings and Chronicles, and we can see how the people of God, they sacrificed uh, uh, a number of offerings that could not be numbered. They were so excited at the completion, uh, completion of this house of the Lord. Now, when we study this, as we look at this temple of Solomon, Solomon's temple, we will see that it is uh, uh, something done for the Lord. It is something that is done unto the Lord. I just want to end uh, this uh, lesson uh, as we've looked at the historical contents and we've seen where this temple uh, even began, how it got started. Uh, where, wh Why did uh, God uh, uh, have a temple uh, uh, in Jerusalem? Well, it started in the heart of his servant David and it uh, carried over into his servant Solomon. And so when we look at this, uh, it was done unto the Lord. 
Solomon was so excited. Uh, and Solomon said, as uh, we read there in 1 Kings chapter 9, he said uh, the, that he had uh, built this house uh, uh, of the Lord, uh, and he said uh, that this uh, was uh, for the Lord. He said, uh, and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel in 2 Chronicles chapter 6. And so we find uh, that uh, what he was doing was unto the Lord. Could I end this and remind us uh, as we look at how this temple came about, how this building of the temple was even con uh, uh, conceived, uh, more or less constructed. We find uh, that it was something uh, that uh, God's servant wanted to do uh, uh, for the Lord. He wanted God uh, to have a place to dwell uh, among them. And let me just say this to us and make it very clear. God desires uh, to be among His people. But God help us as His people to desire for God to be among His people. Oh, Moses, I want you to build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among uh, my people. But David said, God, let me build you a house uh, that I can dwell uh, with you. And I just want to say that God is dwelling among his people and he has a desire for that. But could we tonight uh, search our hearts and see our desire about dwelling uh, with God and being with God and having a place uh, that God can dwell with us. What a great desire in the heart of David for God to have a dwelling place. Uh, what a great thought it is that God wants to dwell with us. But do we want uh, to dwell with God? It is seen in this construction of the temple that before it was ever constructed uh, on uh, the, the, the land and on the dirt of Jerusalem, it was conceived in the heart of God uh, as a man, uh, his faithful servant, David. And so we close. We say to you tonight that as we study this uh, temple of Solomon in the next uh, uh, weeks, as we look at it, can I just say to us uh, that as God wants to dwell among man, may we search our hearts to see if we want to dwell where God wants to dwell. The Temple of Solomon, Lesson 1.